Compared to the compounds of S&P block elements that are almost always white, many of the ionic and covalent compounds of the transition metals are colored in nature. And in this video, we will try to touch upon the reasons why compounds of transition elements appear colored. Now, we all know the general phenomenon behind the appearance of color, right? We know that when light passes through an object, some wavelengths of the light get absorbed. And if this absorption occurs in the visible region, then the color that is complementary to the color that got absorbed gets transmitted. For example, plants appear green because they mostly absorb red light and some blue light while the green light gets reflected. Now this absorption of light in the visible or the UV region occurs due to the changes in the electronic energy. That is the energy that is associated with the promotion of electron from one energy level to the other. Now usually the energy jump is so large that the absorption lies almost always in the UV region. But in some cases it is possible to obtain small jumps in the electronic energy which usually appear as absorption in the visible region. Now things take an interesting turn when we talk about ions with incomplete d or f orbitals. You see an isolated gaseous ion of a transition metal that is free from any external influence has 5 degenerate d orbitals. That is, all the orbitals here are of same energy. But in reality, these ions are not really isolated. They are usually surrounded by solvent molecules. For example, in the case of copper sulfate, hydrated copper sulfate where copper ions are uh, coordinated or associated with five water molecules and this ion and this complex is actually blue in color. So here as you can see the ions can be coordinated with solvent molecules. It can also be coordinated by other ligands in complexes like FeCn6-4- or even other ions in crystal lattices like in the case of MnO4-. So as you can see the ions are not actually isolated but surrounded by different types of ions depending on whether it is in a crystal lattice or in a solution or in a complex. And these surrounding molecules will have some kind of effect on the transition metal ion, right? Of course. The surrounding groups affect the degeneracy of the d orbitals and as a result, the d orbitals split into two groups. Two groups of d orbitals of two different energy levels. Because of this, we can easily promote an electron from one d level to the other d level of higher energy. As the energy difference between the two D level is not very high, the light is absorbed in the visible region. Now the color that is transmitted depends on how big the energy difference is between the two D levels. And this further depends on the nature of the ligands, whether it is a strong ligand or a weak ligand, number of such ligands and the type of the complex that is formed. Now we cannot discuss more about these factors in this particular video. But to give you an overview, if we have a strong ligand, then the d energy levels would split more and therefore the delta E would be larger. Whereas if we have a weak ligand, the delta E would be smaller. And depending on this energy difference, we get the corresponding color. For example, NiH2O6 is green in color, whereas NiNO2 6 would be brown red in color. So even though we have the same metal ion which is nickel, depending on the type or the strength of the ligands it is attached to, the nickel complexes can get different colors. Now what makes a ligand strong or weak is something that we cannot cover in this particular session but will be covered in great detail in your next unit on coordination chemistry. Okay. For now, let's understand that ligands can be classified into strong and weak and depending on the strength of the ligands, the number of ligands and the shape or the type of the complex that is formed, color shown by a particular ion can vary. However, we do have some white colored compounds of transition elements too. For example, zinc sulfate and titanium oxide are white in color. 
This is because in these compounds it is not possible to excite the electrons within the D level. In zinc sulfate, zinc is in plus 2 oxidation state which means it has completely filled 3D orbitals. It does not have any empty D orbitals. On the other hand, titanium 4 plus gives you noble gas configuration. Here the number of electrons in D orbitals is 0. So in the case of zinc, there are no empty D orbitals available to promote the electrons and in the case of titanium, there are no D electrons at all. So because of this, it is not possible to have a DD transition in these compounds and therefore the complexes of these ions do not exhibit any color. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, S and P block elements are also colorless. They do not have any partially filled D orbitals, so obviously we cannot have any DD transitions here. On top of that, the energy required to promote an S or a P electron is much higher and as a result, the absorption occurs in the UV region. This is why the compounds of S and P block elements appear mostly white in color.